The term collision domain is one that is relegated to the past these days. It is a historical footnote in Ethernet history. It's something you generally don't find because people are not usually connecting devices onto shared mediums any longer. Generally, everybody's directly connected to switches. And because of that, there are no longer any collision domains. The term collision also sounds really bad. Perhaps that was the wrong name to use. Because in reality, collisions were something that was used in the normal process of Ethernet. There was not something you could avoid like you would avoid a collision with a car. A collision is something that would normally occur during the process of transferring information across the network. In the old days, every device was on a big shared segment somewhere. They were all connected to a hub. And because of that, if I sent any traffic from my machine to another machine, everybody on the hub would hear that traffic. They would hear that signal coming across. This was a lot like being on a really big conference call with many people on the conference call. And the more people you get on the conference call, the more opportunities there are for two people to start talking at the same time. It's exactly the same idea when you connected so many people into that single hub. In Ethernet, obviously, just like on your conference call, only one person can talk at a time. If more than one person starts talking, you end up having a collision of information, and nobody can really understand anything that's going on. The way you accomplish this in Ethernet is through something called Carrier Sense Multiple Access. You'll almost always see this abbreviated as CSMA. This means that stations will listen for anything else going on on the wire, and then they will send information across the network. The problem is when you have two stations doing this at exactly the same time, you end up having a collision. The signal itself collides, creates a conflict there, and nobody can really understand what's going on. Whenever that occurs, there is a difference in signal on the wire, and something called collision detection it recognizes that these two stations have sent information at exactly the same time, and now that information is colliding. That's why we often call those older Ethernet networks CSMA slash CD, because that is exactly the way they would operate. And if these stations realized that they collided with another, they would then send some extra traffic out called the jam signal that would essentially clear things out. And at that point, the stations waited for a random amount of time and tried resending the information. Obviously, using that random amount of time was important because you didn't want to, again, have another collision occur. Here's a graphical representation of one collision domain. You have a one hub that's represented in the middle by this long Ethernet cable, and everybody is plugged into this Ethernet connection. And if any of these stations transmit, everybody else on this shared medium gets to hear that. If two stations happen to communicate at exactly the same time, then you will get a collision on this network. Now, when these networks got really large, we started getting tens or even hundreds of people on a single hub. It became very, very difficult to communicate because there were so many opportunities to have that data collide right there on the network. So one of the things that we commonly did was put a bridge right in the middle. I put this representing the bridge and split the network into small are pieces. Because the bridge was in the middle and the bridge does not pass those collisions, you can have all of these stations communicating now and these stations on the right side. And now there's less of an opportunity for a collision to occur. Generally, we have switches these days that combine everybody into their own little segment. So we've taken that same concept of separating networks by these bridges. And what we've done is separate every single device by the bridge. And generally, every single device is communicating at full duplex into the switch, which means there is one channel for send and there's one channel for receive. And because of that, you now can't have a collision. There's no physical way for this data to collide. When you're on a hub, everything is half duplex. You can't can't be full duplex on a hub, but in an environment like this, which is what we generally will see today in everywhere you go, is this switch right in the middle and everybody connecting directly to that switch at full duplex. You'll hear the term a collision domain along with broadcast domains. And although it does have a word that's similar in there, obviously the word domain is in both of those, these are very different things. A collision is dealing with the signal going across the network. Broadcasts, however, deal with certain types of packets that are going across the network. These are very important packets 
that are sent to every device on the network. So this broadcast is something that everybody has to know about. For instance, an ARP request is broadcast out to everybody. Hi, I'm trying to figure out the MAC address of my router. I'm going to send this out to the world. If you happen to be the router, please respond back to me with your MAC address. There's no other way to do this in this ARP world. You also see things like operating system notifications. They'll go out as well. A broadcast, unlike a collision, passes right through a bridge. It goes right through a switch. And it has to. If we're directly connected to the switch, we want that broadcast to go out to everybody on that particular subnet. It stops when you hit a router. And that's the place where broadcasts will not go through is anytime you hit a Layer 3 device like a router on your network. Now, this is a pretty important concept because just like collisions, as we put more people on the network, it became harder to communicate. As you put more devices on the network, you will see an increase in the number of broadcasts. And broadcasts are normal parts of networking. You'll see broadcasts come from different machines, for instance, when they perform an ARP request. But generally, the more devices you put on the network, the more broadcasts you're going to have. So occasionally, you will want to check in and make sure you're not having too much of a problem with these broadcasts taking up too much of the bandwidth on your networks. In the picture earlier of a collision domain, I showed you this picture and said, this gets rid of collisions because everybody is directly connected to a switch. But broadcasts don't work this way. In this particular picture, everybody hears the broadcasts that are sent out. If this one machine sends out a broadcast, that switch is going to automatically copy it to everybody else who's on that particular subnet. The only time you can stop a broadcast is by putting a router right in the middle. So if this machine sends a broadcast, only the machines connected to this switch are going to see that broadcast. None of these devices will see that broadcast because there is a router right in the middle of this network.